to a blessed vineyard of Christ International Ministries.
Kumusta po kayo, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ? At kayo po mga patuloy na sumusubaybay dito sa ating uh, online service upang mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. At tunay ngang isang pagpapala ang araw na ito sa bawat isa sa atin sapagkat uh, tayo po ay muling mapupuspos at uh, pagpapala ng salita ng Diyos na siyang patuloy na nagpapatibay ng ating pananampalataya at nagbibigay ng tagumpay sa bawat araw. Tayo po ay manalangin. Father God in heaven, we thank you Lord for this new day, an opportunity again to study your word and to be blessed spiritually through your Holy Spirit. Thank you Lord for the forgiveness of our sins in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Salamat po Panginoon. Kung kaya't sa oras na ito ay kapiling namin ang iyong dahilang banal na Espiritu at siya ang patuloy ng nangunguna at gumagabay upang lubos naming maunawaan ang mga katotohanan inyo pong ipapahayag sa oras na ito. Marami pong salamat sa iyo ang lahat ng mapuri, pagsamba, pagdakila at pagpaparangal sa tanging pangalan dakilang Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Now let us turn your Bible in the book of Romans in chapter 12. We will read it beginning from verse 1 after verse 2. Therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. These verses that we read, the Apostle Paul's message to the believers in Rome, kung ating pong pag-aaralan, mga kapatid, ay tunay na magbibigay sa atin ng lubos na pagkaunawa kung paano isang mananampalataya ay mabubuhay na matagumpay sa kanyang pagtitiwala sa dakilang Diyos at sa patuloy na pagbubunga nito ay aanihin niyang lubos ang lahat ng kabutihan at bunga ng mga pangako ng dakilang Diyos. And Paul speaks about offering. He speaks about the way of living that would result into the knowing the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Truly, this is a pattern of how would a Christian would live a victorious life and would somehow this life would be pleasing to God. You know, every believer's must, or every believer's life must be pleasing to God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And before we move on and know further all these words that would somehow open our minds and reveal more in our hearts so that we may truly do the will of God, let us study it one by one and know the meaning as well of what Paul is trying to convey to his listeners in Rome. Hallelujah. You see, Paul is talking about offering. In the book of Leviticus, in the early chapters of Leviticus, you would know there that God has taught the Israelites to do some offering and these are different kinds of offerings. There is what is called the fellowship offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering. Ito yung mga pag-aalay na pinagagawa ng dakilang Diyos sa mga Israelita ng sila'y tinawag ng Panginoon, pinalaya mula sa pagkaalipin sa Egypto at sila'y kanyang dinala sa lupang pangako at sa kanyang 
pagtupad ng pangako na sila'y pinapalalayain o pinalaya sa pagkaalipin at dinala sa isang lugar na sila ay na kanilang paninirahan at doon sila pagpapalain ng lubos ng dakilang Diyos, katibayan ng Panginoon, ng dakilang Diyos, ang siyang nagligtas sa kanila, at siya lamang ang dakilang Diyos na kanilang sasambahin at kikilalanin. At sa pamamagitan nito, ang Panginoon ay nakipagtipan sa kanila ng isa iba't ibang kaparaanan at kasama ng rito yung mga pag-aalay sa Kanya. At yung mga tinatawag na ito ng mga fellowship offering, sin offering, or guilt offerings, if you will read it and understand in the book of Leviticus, ito yung mga kaparaanan ng dakilang Diyos upang ang mga Israelita ay patuloy na sumamba sa Panginoon at gawin ang mga bagay na ito, yung mga pag-offer o pag-aalay, nang sa gayon ito rin, na ang mga bagay na itinuro ng Panginoon upang sila sa tuwing lalapit sa Diyos ay maging katanggap-tanggap ang kanilang mga panalangin at ang kanilang mga pagpupuri at pagsamba. This is how the way God teaches men on how to worship Him during the times of the Old Testament. And specifically, it was revealed to the Israelites. And along this offering, Meron itong tinatawag na dalawang klasing offering, yung burnt offering <coughs> at saka yung grain offering. In this kinds of fellowship, sin and guilt offering o pag-aalay, meron dalawang bagay na po pwede silang ialay. Yung burnt offering, ito yung mga tinatawag na o yung uh, uh, mga hayop na iba't ibang uri na sa pamamagitan ng seremonyas bago ialay. Ito ay ginagawa ng mga Israelita at kanilang dinadala sa templo o sa isang lugar na kung saan sila ay <coughs> binilinan ng Panginoon o inutusan kung paano iaalay, ay doon nila ito ginaganap o iniaalay. Ang iba't ibang uri ng malinis na hayo, katulad ng tupa, kambing, baka, ganyan din naman, Meron tinatawag na grain offering o ito yung mga uh, wheat, grains, and uh, different barley. Yung mga bunga ng mga halaman na katanggap-tanggap din naman sa Panginoon bilang offering during those times. So, this is how men or God has revealed to men on how to worship Him through these kinds of offering. But remember, these are just the reflections of what is about to come in the coming days in the New Testament. Pero napakahalaga na pag-aralan po natin yung mga bagay na ito sapagkat katulad nga na sinasabi ni Paul dito in the book of Romans is that ang sabi niya is, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. And so, after this time, people still need, or the believers of God still needs to offer something to God. So, mga kaparaan ng mga, o yung paraan ng mga pag-aalay ay ginaganap noon, ang mga taong tinawag ng Diyos. Ganon din naman sa panahon ito, ang mga tao ay dapat din mayroong mga offering o pag-aalay sa ating dakilang Diyos. Sapagkat siya nga ang dakilang Diyos na karapat dapat papurihan, sambahin at pag-alayan ng lahat ng ating pagsamba at pagpupuri. Well, sa panahon ito, We are in the New Testament. Sinasabi ni Paul that our offering is indeed, it's also a live body, pero hindi ito buhay na hayop, kundi yung ating mismong mga buhay. Yung ating mga sarili. Nasabi ni Paul dito, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. So this is the offering that we need to God. Na yung ating mga katawan, 
o yung ating buhay, it should be holy and pleasing to God as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So this is how we offer to God this, uh, in these times, in these New Testament times, or in the time of the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our bodies who are living, it must be pleasing, it must be, oh, oh, it must be holy and pleasing to God as we live or as the Word of God manifests in our lives and as we follow God's will. And so this will be our spiritual act of worship. Ito ang tunay na pagsamba. Yung daw pamumuhay, na matuwid, na may katotohanan, at may kamanalan. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, the four books in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, is for the unbelievers. Sapagat dito matatagpuan ang patungkol sa pagpapatawad ng kasalanan at sa kaligtasan sa kamatayan sa pamamagitan ng dakilang Panginoong Heso Kristo ang ating tagapagligtas. Na siya nag-alay ng kanyang buhay bilang kabayaran sa kasalanan ng tao. And so that's why evangelists, teachers of the Word of God, ito ang ating ginagamit to the unbelievers para sila ay akayin sa kaligtasan. And that's why most of the books of the Bible, apart from the four gospel, it is all, it is all for the believers to nourish their faith, to understand and know more about the Holy Spirit of, or God's gift for Christians to grow in maturity and faith in the Lord. Tulad nga ng sinabi ni Paul to the believers in Rome, Paul is reminding them on how to live their lives as Christians. That though they are living in a prosperous, in a more civilized kingdom or city, unlike the kingdoms that precedes her like the Babylonian, Persian, and the Greek empires, you know, though Rome has achieved greatly more economically and they have their culture, their tradition, and their knowledge, and yet somehow the kind of life of the people in Rome or the, or the Roman citizens it, are far from the kind of life of what the Bible is teaching us. At tulad niya sa mga panahong ito, na bagamat ang tao ay umunlad sa siyensya, sa karunungan, sa kaalaman, and yet, yung klase ng pamumuhay ay malayong malayo pa rin sa uri ng pamumuhay na itinuturo at sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Kung kaya, ang tao, hanggat siya ay hindi nakakakilala sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, Ano mang kaunlaran, ano mang karunungan ang kanyang maabot, ano mang tagumpay, ano mang kayamanan ang kanyang makamtan, ito hindi maka, pa rin makapagbibigay ng isang ganap na buhay na sinasabit itinuturo ng salita ng Diyos na kung higit lalo o kung ano ang higit nating pagsumikapan sa ating buhay. You see, this message of Paul to the believers in Rome, it speaks about more of the will of God. Yung nais, yung kalooban, o yung nasa ng dakilang Diyos. You see, Paul's reminder to the believers in Rome is about the pleasing and perfect will of God. Why is it important for every believer to know, to understand, and to do the good, the pleasing, and perfect will of God. Turn your Bibles in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. It is saying to the believers that, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, 
but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Again, Paul is saying to the believers in the book of Ephesians that every believer must know and understand how they are living, na kung paano nabubuhay, not as unwise, hindi hangal, but as wise. Or nabubuhay sa pagiging, or mayroong katalinuhan. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Nakatulad sa mga panahong ito, every believer must know the opportunity in these times of pandemic and we must know that there are opportunities because these days are evil, though it is evil, though diseases, uh, uh, viruses, and sicknesses are, you know, spreading and it is affecting the lives of many people like uh, of a country and yet to a believer there there are opportunities that we could see if we could only live wisely in these times because indeed we should live wisely because we are the believers of God we should be looking after on how do we live na kung paano tayo nabubuhay sa panahon ng krisis, sa panahon ng taghirap, sa panahon ng kakulangan, o sa panahon ng kaguluhan. Because even though that these days are evil, there are opportunities for the believers of God. And so therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. The will of God must be supreme in the lives of every believers. Ito yung pinaka-importante. Ito yung pinaka-higit sa lahat sa buhay ng tao. Alam nyo, kahit nga ang ibang relihiyon o yung ibang tao na mayroong pananampalataya sa iba't ibang relihiyon, they are also quoting the will of God. And they are saying, if God's will, ito'y nagiging sa kanila, nagiging kasabihan na sa kanila. At tulad nga dito sa atin, meron tayong mga kasabihan, bahala na, or coming from the word, bathala na, in the, the our ancestors, yan ang kanilang paniniwala noon, na bahala na ang Diyos. And so they are entrusting their lives unto the will of God. And yet, many people do not know the will of God. Though they are trying to live it by their words, by their saying, pero hindi nila naunawa ng lubos kung ano ba yung will of God na katulad ng sinasabi ni Paul that if you would understand and know the will of God, God's good, God's pleasing and perfect will, you will live in the life of opportunity even though the days are evil. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, the will of God must be reigning in our lives. Ito ang dapat na naghahari. Kung ano yung nasa, kung ano yung kalooban. The desire, the will of God. Ito yung ating pinagsusumikapan. Ito yung ating isinasa pamuhay. Not our own will, but the will of God. Remember in the book of Matthew, in chapter 6, verse 10, ang sabi doon ng Panginoong Jesus, when He is teaching the disciples about the Lord's prayer, the Lord said, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. You know, every time we pray, the Lord Jesus tells the disciples, every time you pray, you must invoke, you must always say, and you must always be reminded that the will of the Father in heaven must be done in your lives on earth as it is in heaven. It must be done dito sa lupa, nagahari, dito sa lupa, ng katulad ng sa langit. That is how important it is. Every time we pray, the Lord Jesus said, be reminded, you must be doing the will of God, not your own will. 
this is how important it is. And so, if a believer truly could only understand, know, and fully manifest it in, her, in his life, the will of God, and so something, a greater things will happen unto his life. So if that greater things is to happen or are to happen in our lives, the will of God must be paramount in every believers or to every believers. And so what is the will of God? We need to understand and we need to know what is this will of God for us to fully persevere at ito ang ating pagsumikapan kinakapag ito ay ating naunawaan ng lubos ito ang ating pagsumikapan and let this will of God be manifest in our lives because this will of God if it is happening in the lives of every believers in the believers in Rome in the believers in Ephesus in the believers during this, those early days of Christianity in the believers even during these times if the will of God is reigning in our hearts, in our minds, sa ating buhay, you know, truly, it, is, it will be a different life. A life of victory in faith for every believer. That is why, kung pag-aaralan po ninyo, even the Old Testament times, even uh, in the early Christian lives, you know, that will of God, ito ang nagbigay ng, oh, nag, ng, ng inspirasyon ng pagpapatuloy sa bukong muhay pananampalataya at sa panunugumpay sa bawat araw ng mga mananampalataya as they face many challenges many trials and many obstacles in their Christian living in their life of faith to God Hallelujah praise the Lord and so we need to know we need to understand that good pleasing and perfect will of God na ito ang lubos na maghari sa ating buhay. And what is that will of God? Or what is the will of God? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, 3 to 4, it says there that it is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, this is the will of God. It is God's will that every believer must be sanctified. That's the will of God. Sanctified, pinapaging banal, nilinis, dinalisay. This is the will of God. Na yung buhay daw o yung katauhan ng bawat mananampalataya ay dinalisay, nalinis, pinapaging banal. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so that we could avoid the many kinds of sins like the sexual immorality the sexual immorality you know when you say the sin of sexual immorality it involves or it describes the many kinds of perversions adulteries and infidelities that would somehow including idolatry at lahat ng uri ng mga kasalanan na nagpaparumi sa tao. Na sa paggawa niya ng mga kasalanan ito, ito ang nagdudulot ng ganap na kapahamakan sa kanyang kaluluwa, sa kanyang katawan, sa kanyang buhay, tungo sa kamatayan. And so somehow, God is saying that our lives must be sanctified. We should be living, we should be knowing the will of God is for us to be sanctified, for us to to do away with sin upang mabigyan ng pagtatapos o yung, yung pamumuhay ng kasalanan sa ating buhay at matapos. And we could do it 
by learning how to control our own body. And controlling our own body, then it is a way to become holy and honorable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God wants us to be sanctified. That is the will of God. And knowing this will of God in our lives, it must be the infer in the inspiration. It must be the kind of life that uh, we should be aiming for more every day. Na habang nabubuhay tayo, ito ang ating pinagsusumikapan, ito ang ating pinagbubuhusan ng ating puso't kaisipan, lakas ng ating kakayahan. Upang sa gayon, magawa natin ang mga bagay na to that in our lives, the good and pleasing, perfect will of God is reigning in the lives of every believer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, when the life of the, or when the will of God is reigning in the life of every believer, his life is pleasing to God. His life is pleasing to God. Kaaya-aya, katanggap-tanggap, kalugod-lugod. This is how we should live every day in our lives. Na dapat lang lahat ng ating mga ginagawa, iniisip or sinasalita, ay patuloy na katanggap-tanggap or ayon sa kalooban ng dakilang Diyos at ito ay pleasing sa Kanya. Kasiya-siya. And so this is the most important thing as we face every or each day in our lives, we should be knowing the will of God. And once we know the will of God through prayers, through meditation, through the words of God, na sa habang ating pagbabasak o pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos sa ating mga pananalangin sa ating mga quiet time no? yung pakikipag-fellowship sa Panginoon dito natin naunumaan dito natin natatanggap yung kalooban ng Diyos dito nahahayag and as it is being revealed to us through the Holy Spirit of God ito ngayon ang ating pinagsusumikapan in every days of our lives As, uh, as we face its challenges and its troubles in life every day, whether it is in our job, in our work, or in the ministry, and, or in the family, you see, as long as the will of God is reigning in our lives, you know, our lives will be pleasing to God, and a pleasing life to God reaps the many benefits of being faithful to him and so in this teaching of Paul in the book of Romans to the believers in Rome and to all the believers it, it gives us two key instructions as we aim or we strive for the will of God to reign in our lives it also gives us a very important instructions that if we would follow We could know the will of God, and we would somehow live it in our lives, and our lives be pleasing to God. And so what are these instructions? Remember, these are instructions. Hindi ito pakiusap, hindi ito pahinuhod. These are instructions that we need to follow as believers. Number one says there, Paul says that, do not conform to the pattern of this world. You see, earlier, as Paul is saying these words, he's saying to the believers in Rome, Paul is reminding them that, that they are, though they are living in a prosperous, in a civilized city like Rome, but they should not be conforming to the kind of life that the Romans are living. Since kayo yung mga mana ng palataya, Paul is reminding them that they shouldn't be conforming to the kind of life that they are living in Rome. And so, kailangan ang isang mana ng palataya ay nabubuhay hindi ayon sa klase ng pamumuhay sa lupa, the worldly living, kundi ayon sa katotohanan ng pamumuhay na sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. In wisdom, even yung mga kaparaanan, 
At yung mga dinidesire ni na nasa, kailang ito'y kaiba sa kaparaanan o sa uri ng pamumuhay ng sanlimutan. You know, if you are only to look in the three areas of the way na kung saan ang, ang worldly living, it is being displayed in these three aspects, and so we could also know very well that in these three aspects of life, that in wisdom, in way, in the desire or will, sa mga areas na ito, sa mga bagay na ito, nasa kung saan ang, ang isang tao ay bahagi ng kanyang pamumuhay kung maunawaan natin ng lubos na kung papaano at kung dapat kakaiba ang uri ng ating mga kaalaman or yung wisdom na pinananaligan or yung kaparaanan, yung direksyon ng pamumuhay at maging yung mga pagnanasa ni nasa sa bawat araw-araw eh ito, dito natin makukuha, matututunan at magagawa yung paglayo o yung pagbabago ng ating buhay na hindi naaayon sa kaparaanan ng pamumuhay o in the pattern of the worldly living. And so somehow, we could, li- we, we, we could live a life, a godly life that is honorable or that is truly pleasing to God. Now, how do we compare this kind of living, the worldly living and the godly living that Paul is telling to the believers that we should be living on, not on the pattern of this worldly living? First, let's look at the wisdom. The wisdom. What is the wisdom of the world and what is the wisdom of God? Turn your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. It says there that, where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God had made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. You see, this is the wisdom of the world. Paul is saying that in the wisdom of the world, in his many discoveries, in his many advancement, in, in, in different fields of learning, yet still, though it make him progressive, though it make him, his life bring many comfortable things, and yet, this wisdom of man, or the wisdom of the world did not made him know about God. Hindi na hayag ang dakilang Diyos sa sinasabing karunungan sa kaalaman ng tao or ng mundo. And rather, it made him foolish that though there is so many wise men, so many scholars, or so many philosophers, as Paul is saying, na bagmat napakaraming biyasa, O napakaraming may mga pinag-aralan, napakarami yung mga nag- naging dalubhasa sa iba't ibang uh, uh, fields of learning. And yet, it did not make them to know about God. It did not cause them to know more about God and to seek Him more in their lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You see, this wisdom of man, na ito ang pinananaligan ng maraming tao, na ito ang pinagmamalakyo, or ito yung kanilang ginagamit upang sila ay magkamit ng maraming tagumpay, or masabing successful, at nakagagawa ng maraming bagay, nakapag-achieve, ng maraming bagay, and yet, the most important thing, the greatest thing in our lives, which is the will of God to happen in our lives, and so that if that will of God is happening in our lives, we know, we, we, we know how to live, and how to persevere, or how to, to strive for us to live a life that is pleasing to God, and so we could know the will of God, and that will of God is for us to be fully sanctified, this wisdom of the world did not provide or did not give all these 
things that could somehow improve the lives of a sinful man. The next is the way of our life or our living. Yung uri, yung kaparaanan ng ating pamumuhay. In John 14:6, this is a well-known verse. The Lord Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." So before you come to know the life and the truth, you must know the way. You see, kapag ang isang tao ilumbas ng kanyang tahanan at meron siyang pupuntahan, he must know the way ng kanyang pupuntahan. Unless otherwise, if you don't know the way, you will not achieve to your, you will not arrive to your destination, and you will not achieve your goal for going to that place. Or why did you travel on that journey? You see, a man's life is a journey. We have the beginning and we have the end. And every person must know or must understand that every life has to come to an end. Meron tayong katapusan. And if you are traveling along this life, like a journey, and so we must know the way. Dapat alam mo yung iyong dinaraanan, alam mo yung iyong kaparaanan, alam mo yung uri ng iyong buhay. We must understand how the way we spend our lives, na kung paano tayo nabubuhay sa bawat araw. Now, ungodly or unbelievers do not know the kind of way of life or their way of living. Hindi nila alam na yung ginagawa nila sa bawat araw, they are living in sin, hindi nila alam na yung mga ginagawang yaon ay nagdudulot o naghahatid sa kanila sa isang kapahamakan and so somehow, yung kapahamakan na to, it might be irreversible kung sila'y patuloy na gagawin ito sa araw-araw, that everybody who are living in sin would end up unto death. And so when a person has come to his end in death, then it's no longer irreversible for us to come, for that person to go back to life again. Because after death is the judgment of God. The, the Bible says that it is appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. And so every person on earth is bound for death to die after they have completed their time on earth lahat tayo ay mauwi sa kamatayan for the wages of sin is death. And so people must learn to know if the way of sin is death, is there any other way for me that I could continue on life or in life or in living? And these are the way that the believers no, they had known it through the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord Jesus Christ says that I am the way they believe in that words of the Lord Jesus Christ they surrender their lives like you believers of God you accept the word that the Lord Jesus Christ is the way he is the truth and the life and so that way going to life is the way that you have re received, the way that you are traversing right now, ito yung inyong nilalakaran, not the way of death, and so you will end up into life. Though the process of become, or, or, or rather from, uh, uh, of living again from death to life, is a process that somehow was revealed through the Lord Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection of the cross, that is the, the, that is the faith or that is the belief that we hold on to that promises of God of a new life because of the power or through the power of his death 
and resurrection. And so that is the way of every believers. The way that we knew na maghahatid sa atin tungo sa buhay na walang hanggan. And so this is the way that every believers are following. Not the pattern of the world, of the sinful world, of the sinful man, that they do not know their way, that they are living in sin, not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, not accepting the Lord Jesus Christ, not accepting the gift of God, the eternal life through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so their way is the way of death. And so the believer's way, because they are in the Lord, is the way of life. So this is different. The way of the world is death. The way of the Lord is life eternal. And so that differs. And we should no longer conforming to that pattern of the world. The way of the world is death. And the way of the Lord, Jesus Christ, is life. As he said it, I am the way. And so that is the pattern or the way of life that we should be following. As the Lord says, I am the way, I am the way. We must continue walking in the light of the word of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every day we must, be, we must continue to do His will. Thirdly, is what we want in this life. Ano yung tinidesire mo? Ano yung inahangad mo? You know, in Mark chapter 8, verse 35 to 36, it says there that whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? And so this verse is in Mark. It clearly reflects that the desire or wanting of man is for him to gain the whole world. The sinful man desires for the world. The world the things, mga bagay sa lupa, ito yung ninanasa ng tao. Ito yung kanyang pinagsusumigaman. You know, many people are not knowing God because they are more focused to have more of the things in this life. Yung mga bagay na material kaysa sa yung mga bagay na spiritual. That's why the Lord Jesus said, what good or what profits a man even if you gain the whole world or yung lahat ng bagay dito sa lupa, magkamal ka man, magkaroon ka man ng napakaraming kayamanan, makamtan mo man ang lahat ng tagumpay dito sa lupa. It's just a worldly achievement. It's just a worldly gain. It's just a worldly wealth. And yet, you forfeit your soul or you loses your soul. What gains or what profits, profit that it brings you? So the Lord is saying that your, all your earthly effort, worldly effort, your striving, your perseverance, for you to, to make your life more comfortable, to make your life, to extend the, the lifespan of men or every person, everything, yung lahat ng pagsusumikap na yun, ng tao para lang sa kanyang buhay dito sa lupa. He's trying to save everything in his life Dito sa lupa, the Lord says, whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. That if that person would only know that the most important thing is the Lord Jesus Christ offering of his grace and salvation to all men. And we could found it, we, or we could find it, we could know it in the gospel in the words of God. And so, if you exchange that desire of knowing the Lord and, and knowing the gospel, in exchange for what you have gained in this world, at whatever cost, makamtan mo lang yung salita ng Diyos, yung katotohanan, yung kanyang grasya at habag, at whatever cost sa iyong buhay, anuman ang mawala sa iyo, the Lord Jesus is saying, whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Mababalik sa iyo, makakamtan mo. You know, maraming believers, and I know some of them personally, that in exchange for the salvation that they have received from God, tinalikuran nila 
yung kanilang mga trabaho, yung kanilang mga negosyo. Na bagamat nagbigay sila, nagbigay sa kanila ng maraming kayamanan at pag o masasabing uh, mga material na bagay dito sa lupa since ito ay sa kaparaan naman ng mundo o ng kasalanan ng tao. Tinalikuran nila ang lahat 'yon. Makamtan lamang nila ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. At ang kanyang kaligtasang ibinibigay sa lahat ng tao. And so, they save or they receive the life, the salvation, and the eternal life from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so this is how we manifest the life that is not conforming to the pattern of the life in this world. In wisdom, in our way of living, in the things that we are wanting in this life, I call it the three values that we should follow so that we will not conform to the pattern in this world. This is how we should understand the words of Paul. And secondly, he's saying, Paul said that, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the next instructions. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is the renewing of your mind? In Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, I would read it. Romans 8, verse 5 to 8, it says there that those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. But the mind, or the mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor it can do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. Again, this is about the sinful nature. You know, yung natural na pagiging makasalanan ng tao. And it is in the minds of man. The mind of man is the soul of man. And it is the soul that is sinning. Hindi yung spirito, yung kaluluwa at yung katawang lupang ito ang nagkakasala. Our spirit is the spirit of life from God. The soul is the one sinning. Ito ang nagkakasala yung ating kaluluwa. And our mind is in the soul which is in this body. And so, Paul said that our mind must be transformed. The mind of every believer must be transformed. Every day it should be transforming. And that daily transformation, it involves the Spirit of God. Because it says here that the mind set on what the Spirit who lives in accordance with the Spirit, their minds are set on what the Spirit desires. What is, what is the desire of the Spirit of God? It is for us to be sanctified. You see, the minds of the sinful man desires what the nature desires. Meaning to say, because of the sinful nature that is in his body, that is in his soul, that is in his mind, whatever its desire, and its desires is always in nature, kung ano yung nasa lupa, kung ano yung mga physical, kung ano yung material, ito yung kanyang laging pinagnanasaan. And these are the causes of sin in his life na patuloy niyang nagagawa every day, confirming that truly he is being enslaved or inaalipin, naalipin ng kanyang pagiging natural na makasalanan. Na every time ang kanyang laging focus ay yung material na bagay, pera, the many things in this world, kung ano yung nakikita ng mata ng tao, the last of his eyes, the last of his flesh. Yung kanyang nararamdaman, yung mga kanyang pinagnanasaan, yung mga bagay-bagay na kanyang inaasam sa lupa. What the nature desires. So ito yung pagkakaiba. And we must be transformed, ang sabi ni Paul. We must be transformed from that sinful nature towards the spirit nature of God. And so our lives must be spiritual. You see, if it is spiritual, it is unnatural. And indeed, 
the life of a believer, it follows many signs and wonders. That is unnatural. That is extraordinary. And that is about life, the facts of life. Our God is a living God. He is the author of life. And so many signs and wonders, many miracles, many amazing things, it is being done by God. And so God wants it to do as well in our lives, to the believer's lives. And if the Holy Spirit of God or the Spirit of God is in our lives, and so we are living spiritually, so many unnatural things, many miracles will happen in the life of a believer. And one of the great things, a miracle things that is happening to the life of a believer, as long as he is following the spirit of life, the spirit of God, and so his minds are being renewed and it's becoming more and more spiritual in nature, not simple, hindi na makasalanan. Because a sinful mind is rebellious to God. It cannot obey and it cannot please our God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, a life that is pleasing to God means it is a life of sustenance. It is a life of protection. It is a life of many eternal characteristics. The reason why God says, to be sanctified. That is the will of God. Ito ang dapat mong pagsumikapan. Isang taong o isang mananampalataya ang nabubuhay sa ngayon. In whatever circumstances that you are in, gaano man kahirap, and truly indeed, our days are evil. Nasa huling panahon tayo, our days are evil. Napakasama na ng mundo, napakasama na ng buhay sa lupa, napakasama na ng mga araw sa lupa. And yet, if the will of God is in your life and you are living a pleasing life to God, and so your life will be a life of sustenance, will be a life of provision, will be a life of blessings. Your life will be a life of protection, a life of divine protection from God. That those, that though they are so, there are so many uh, uh, sickness, diseases, or so many plagues that is prevailing in our surroundings. Yet, God's divine protection will always be upon you, and it always has that eternal characteristics. That even though na humamtong sa kamatayan, o dumating tayo sa katapusan ng buhay dito sa lupa, katapusan ng mundo, yet. The gift of eternal life is always there in our body, in our soul, because the Spirit of God is with us. And so we will live for eternally in the same way the Lord Jesus was resurrected from death towards eternal life. That is how, or that is why, or that's the meaning of being sanctified by the will of God of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so man's life must be reconciled to God's will. Yung daw ating buhay ay dapat ayon layon sa kalooban ng dakilang Diyos. But as long as you are not having that will of God in your life and it can be achieved or it could be attained or it could be received through the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Ang isang tao hindi makakapamuhay na naunawaan niya, natanggap niya ang kalooban ng Diyos hanggat hindi niya natatanggap ang dakilang Panginoong Keso Kristo. And so if you know, if you want to receive the will of God, you must receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You see in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 22, it says there that, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. You know, this is the promise of ev to everyone who would come to know the Lord or who would come to, do, to know God and submit himself unto the Lord. Na ang pangakong ito ng dakilang Diyos na lahat daw ng matapat na lumalapit, nagpapakumbaba, 
they will have the full assurance na yung pananampalatayang yaon, ang kanilang pagsusuko ng kanilang buhay sa Panginoon, makatitiyak ka na ikaw daw ay pakakalinisin sa lahat from the guilty conscience, lahat ng pagkakasala mo, at ang iyong buong katauhan sa pagpapatawad ng Diyos sa iyong mga kasalanan, ikaw ay dadalisayin. Having your bodies washed with pure water. And that it could only be received through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us to live eternally. And so, ikaw kapatid, na kung hindi ka pa nakatitiyak sa iyong kalalagayan sa mga oras na ito, not knowing the will of God should be reigning in your heart and so your life must be pleasing and so you will receive God's grace towards eternity having all that eternal characteristics the life eternal this is the time that you need to surrender yourself to God and know His will so that you might live for eternity and if you're willing be with me in this prayer and say the prayer with me let us pray Lord Jesus, tunay nga Panginoon na kailangan ko pong tagapagligtas at Ikaw, Panginoon, ang daan at ang katotohanan at ang buhay. Through You, I could know the will of God and so I could know how to live a life that is pleasing to God. And that will of God is for me to be sanctified and Your blood alone sanctified to those who come to You and confess of their sins. And I am confessing right now, I am repenting and I'm surrendering my life to you, Lord Jesus. Forgive all my sins. Patawarin po ninyo ako, Panginoon. At sa inyo ko po isinusuko ang aking sarili. At inaangking ko po ang pagpapatawad na yan sa pamamagitan ng iyong banal na dugo at ang pagpapanibagong buhay. Please come to me, Lord. Reign in me. Ikaw po ang aking hari. Ikaw po ang aking tagapagligtas. Ikaw po ang aking dakilang Diyos mula sa oras na ito. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I hope kayo po ay napagpalak ng mensaheng ito mula sa ating nakilang Diyos. At nawa sa patuloy na pag-aaral po natin ay uh, maging ganap na maunawaan natin at makamtan natin yung kalooban ng Panginoon. The will of God. Na tunay nga na kapag ating sinabi, let thy will be done, ay eh ito nga ang ating ginagawa sa ating buhay. Kung magkagayon ang ating mga pananalangin, ay nagiging makatotohanan at ito, ay dinirinig ng ating dakilang Diyos. Pagpalain po kayo ng ating Panginoon. God bless you all.